Hello friends, my name is Brad Beard, owner and winemaker for Mercury Wine. That's my good boy, Freddy. He's always out here helping me cook. Uh, I am uh, located in downtown Geyserville, California, and welcome to Pairings with Brad, where I cook up some fun food and pair them up with my absolutely fantastic wine. And uh, we've got a bunch of things going on today, but all the recipes are fairly simple. There's just one that we have to do a little blending. The rest is just throwing some things together, mixing it up and letting it marinate. And uh, today it's a little bit of a skewer theme. So we're gonna be doing a uh, Pride Inspired Rainbow Skewer, uh, all vegetables. So we've got our vegetarians uh, taken care of there. And then we have a uh, chicken chimney. <laughs> oh, what is that, Brad? Can you say that three times fast? Let me get some wine. I don't think I was hydrated enough. It was hot today. Oh, Savion Blanc, warm summer afternoon. Can't go wrong with that. Let's see if I can do that. And then we have my chicken chimichurri skewers um, that are absolutely fantastic and a Thai-inspired beef skewer uh, covering all of the different <laughs> genres from veggies to chicken to meat. Um, that Thai-inspired uh, beef skewer, absolutely fantastic as well. We're going to have a peanut sauce to dip that in as well and I was running late so I didn't make it I bought it uh, that's gonna be just fine so I'm continuing my summer barbecue or getting into summer uh, barbecue themed uh, dishes we're gonna be working our way into Father's Day uh, with that and uh, the wines that I'm gonna be pairing up uh, we've got my 2019 Sauvignon Blanc I think that's going to be best with the chicken skewers. We have my 2018 Spanish Albarino. I think that's going to be great with the uh, veggies. And uh, for and uh, for the red, um, I've chosen my 2016 Freddy Cuvée, which is a fantastic GSM blend. Um, and I think it's going to be able to stand up to that little bit of heat and all the crazy things uh, that we're going to marinate uh, that one in. But hey, let's get started. Let's go ahead and start with uh, the veggies. Super simple. And uh, here we go. I even got them all lined up for you over here. Uh, so you're going to need to go get uh, some of these cute little uh, mini um, purple uh, potatoes and then we've got our purple onions. We've got a trifecta of green pepper So we have a regular bell pepper. We've got a poblano pepper and then a jalapeno pepper in there aye, aye, aye. Just to add a little spice and then continuing the green thing. We've got a couple of our uh, zucchini Switching into yellow. We've got our yellow bell pepper and we've got our yellow crooknick squash um, and then uh, since like I was saying we didn't get any orange bell peppers, and how am I going to get something orange? So I took um, a uh, white onion, and right now it is uh, marinating in um, some uh, food uh, dye. Some um, oh, that'd be orange food dye. Good lord, look at the color, Brad. And then we'll move into my red bell peppers and uh, tomatoes. Over here, I've got some baby heirlooms, uh, but then I've also got some sweet reds uh, to go as well. The marinade. You might not even have to go and get anything uh, at the store. Very simple. So actually, really the marinade vinaigrette. We'll go ahead and call it a vinaigrette right now. So we start out with a quarter cup of uh, olive oil, extra virgin, regular, whatever you have in. I don't think that really matters too much. Uh, then we're going to go two tablespoons of a nice white wine vinegar or a champagne vinegar to give us some nice zest. Uh, two cloves of minced garlic. Uh, and very simple, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm going to taste it to see where I think it's at. You know, if we need to add a little more of that, we can. And then we'll finish up uh, with a little more spice with a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. So I put all that together already here. Uh, I'm going to hold off right there. I don't remember if I told you you need to. Oh, yeah, you do need to uh, boil your potatoes off first because it's going to all the vegetables are going to cook a little quicker. So let's see. I threw all that stuff in there. Oh, look, here we go. Give this a nice uh, whisk. Get it going. Just going to whisk away. Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to get all my uh, vegetables uh, back in here. Don't want to stab myself with the fancy skewers, except for my orange <laughs> onions. I'm going to see if my uh, last minute thought uh, process was going to do that and I've got this on a skewer already and that's just so that all my onions don't fall apart and I have to find them again and um, put them back in and then for these guys we'll see uh, see how it did um, I 
I'm pretty happy with it. It's orange-ish. It's not the most orangest uh, onion or uh, colors I've ever seen, but we tried. At least the tips are orange, so we'll throw those guys in there too. And uh, I just wanted to say this uh, recipe makes um, pretty much 16 small skewers, but I've got my big ones today, so I'm just going to double them up. There we go. Get rid of this carefully so we don't end up with everything stained orange. I think I'm already doing that. There we go. All right, I'm going to get this guy uh, one more whisk. Oh, by the way, I did uh, boil those potatoes in salt uh, to try to get some more uh, flavor in there. And then right before I put these on the, um, on the grill, we're going to hit them with a little more salt and pepper just to make sure that they've got uh, plenty of flavor. There it is. Awesome. Very easy. Like I said, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I probably could go an hour and not hurt anything. I'm going to get these all stirred up really quick, get them in the refrigerator. I'm going to bring out everything for our uh, next one. I don't know. Beef, chicken, we'll figure out what is next. See you in a second. All right, friends, we are back. I've decided to go ahead and go with the uh, chimichurri chicken. We've got uh, the wasps are out in uh, force trying to get chicken. They love chicken. I don't have my traps out yet. I didn't think we were going to have this kind of a problem. I'm going to go ahead and deal with it. That made it much better. The reason why I went with this one is this one's a little more difficult only because we have to use a blender. Woohoo! No big deal. So this is my um, chimichurri chicken marinade and uh, the big thing about this is don't forget don't use all your marinade on the chicken because you want to hold some back and use it as a dipping sauce once everything's all grilled up and uh, a couple other things you know there's a lot of chimichurri recipes that are all just regular parsley i'm a bigger fan of the italian parsley and cilantro side of things um so i decided to use a mix of all three because i couldn't decide Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the very simple ingredients. So we put three quarters of a cup of uh, olive oil and or um, avocado oil. You know, I, I, I like both. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. And then um, typically if I'm doing just the chicken recipe, I would use a quarter cup of white wine vinegar. But since I'm going to be uh, having chicken and beef tonight, I thought I would throw a little red wine vinegar in there. So about a quarter cup of each. Um, but, you know, whatever type of vinegar you like. If you like more red wine vinegar, it's going to be fine. But uh, for me, the lighter white wine is probably better with the uh, chicken. And then we're going to do uh, five cloves of garlic. We're going to do a full tablespoon of oregano. We're going to have a quarter teaspoon of cumin, red pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and then we're gonna throw everything in here and blend it all up, and it's gonna take a little time. That's the only difficult part. So let's get that going. We've got the uh, oil and vinegar already in here. Don't throw the chicken in. <laughs> so, so I've got all my spices uh, pre-measured out, ready to go. Get those guys in. Awesome. Fantastic garlic. Maybe that's why the guys are trying to get me. There we go. Put these back off the side maybe they'll bother people over there um, and then uh, really simple with when you've got these things um, you don't have to pull all the leaves off especially if you're gonna be blending it you know having a little stems in there is not a problem because uh, the stems actually for cilantro taste like cilantro parsley and that so if, if it's uh, something that's gonna be in a dish that's just slightly chopped up you probably want to remove the stems but I don't care and so we do what we call is uh, shaving it so we just take our knife and then shave down. Oh, look at that. That worked out pretty good. A little more cilantro. I'm feeling more cilantro today. And it was the smallest bunch. A little bit of a regular parsley. So you just kind of just give it a nice, easy uh, chop down. Super simple. Oh my gosh, the aromatics uh, is smelling uh, great. Look at that. So just very simple. Oh, I got a couple of big stems in there. I am not going to care. It's going to be just fine. So we'll set these guys off the side, grab all of this. And you know what we're gonna need for this? Uh, we need a long spoon because since there's not a lot of liquid in here, it's not gonna blend up very easily. So you need to uh, grab a long spoon and then just pulse on and off, pulse on and off. And uh, as it starts going, push it down, push it down. It will come eventually uh, around for you. And, oh my gosh, through the magic of uh, television, here comes a spoon. Thanks, Danny. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, we've got everything in there. 
Uh, all my uh, herbs and spices are in. Fantastic. This might be good in there, but I don't know. Probably better right there. All right. Super simple. I'm just going to blend this up a little bit. Hit the pulse button. Just a little. And see down at the bottom, the parsley's not wanting to come down. That's okay. Just a couple more pulses to get that liquid going down there. And then we're going to be pushing it down. Push those little guys. And the reason why I just don't go full bore and not care and just kind of push it down whenever I feel like it is that uh, we still want some consistency to this marinade. Let's see how it tastes. perfect <laughs> the, the, the mix of vinegar is actually great all right sorry about that shocked myself but as you guys know as i'm uh preparing to do these things i'm too many things in my mind and i'm always uh, changing things up that's fantastic i might just do it that way from now on oh that's really nice um, I wonder if we can get a little shot on that. It's uh, oh, almost impossible to see it. Anyway, you still want some pieces, parts in there. You don't want it to be completely smooth. So just use your best judgment. Um, like that last little bite I got, there was a piece a little bit too big. There it is. Holy mackerel. This is fantastic. The most important part, don't put it all over your chicken. Uh, or else you're not going to have any to dip in, and you really want to have this to dip in with the chicken. Uh, so with this recipe, it's going to serve uh, four people. It's uh, four six-ounce chicken breasts. I have no idea um, how, how much my chicken breasts weigh. They're average size. They're not the Costco pterodactyls, but they're not little uh, teeny wimpy ones either. But I was also thinking, because uh, Danny likes uh, dark meat, that I would do some uh, chicken thighs with this as well. And as I was dicing them up, it was easier to get a consistent cube with the chicken breast. And the chicken thighs ended up being a little thinner. And my initial thought was I was going to do a uh, breast uh, thigh, breast thigh, breast thigh. But uh, for, especially when you're cooking chicken, you want to get it all to the right temperature. And so um, I'm just going to do one skewer, just regular chicken breast in one uh, chicken thigh. How easy was that? Come on. And your guests are going to be like, what? Chimichurri sauce? That's one of my favorite things. I only get it in restaurants because they don't sell it in stores. And if they do, it's probably not any good. Uh, it only took a few minutes. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap this up, get this marinated, and then I'm going to come back and get the steak going. All right. See you in a second. All right, my friends. We are back. We are going to knock out another really quick super fantastic marinade uh yes i changed my shirt we had a super tragedy uh with the uh, chimichurri apparently it exploded on me and i had to switch out my shirts uh, but you know sometimes that stuff happens <laughs> so so we're got we've got the beef saute uh with a uh, thai flair to it so we've got a couple pounds of uh meat here you can use um i've tried to use flank steak flank steak you really can't get a consistent thick uh, thickness on your cut because you want a, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch uh, there so this is great with top sirloin London broil and here we are we are ready to make another one of these fantastic marinades mm. so this one with a little bit of an Asian twist is gonna start out with one tablespoon of grated fresh ginger um, if you don't you have fresh you can use uh, you know uh, uh, pre um, squished what, what can you use what is that called uh you can you can buy prepared ginger but i do like i do prefer using a uh, regular uh fresh ginger with a microplaner and stuff like that four cloves of uh crushed and minced uh, garlic uh that's really important to get a really nice fine mince in there so that garlic can get um 
uh, permeated through the mix. We also have um, two tablespoons of minced onion. And then um, this recipe originally called for a quarter cup of brown sugar. But as you know, I don't like adding sugar to any of my um, any of my uh, dishes. There's uh, plenty of sugar out there to get without that. And so I used uh, monk fruit instead. And sometimes monk fruit is a little less sweet than sugar. So you could up that a bit if you were going to try to stay away from sugar and use some monk fruit. And then this recipe also calls for a quarter cup of fish sauce. And now when I see recipes with fish sauce, I usually get scared and I'm not sure how it's going to be. Trust me, by the time this uh, marinade comes together, the fish sauce is going to be in the background, uh, giving you those wonderful umami flavors. Um, and it's not going to be fishy, uh, I promise. Two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of ground coriander. Ground coriander is actually going to be about the dominant flavor in this with the soy sauce, you know, giving it the saltiness, but the ground coriander is key to this. Then we switch down to a tablespoon of cumin, um, a half a tablespoon of turmeric. The turmeric, even though it's a, you know, those are some pretty powerful uh, spices there. the turmeric is going to be doing a lot uh, in there as well. A half a tablespoon, no, 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 a half a teaspoon of uh, cayenne. And this recipe actually calls for um, a couple uh, tablespoons of finely diced uh, lemongrass. The store didn't have lemongrass today. I know what the heck is going on right now with our supply chain, uh, but there was no lemongrass. So you can substitute lemon juice, lime juice, but today I decided to grade up a, uh, uh, oh, this looks like about a tablespoon of uh, lemon zest. I thought that lemon zest might bring some uh, good flavors uh, to it as well. And we're just gonna pull this all together. So I've got my uh, garlic in there, tons of garlic, tons of onion, and we've got that beautiful lemon zest. Uh, we don't wanna miss anybody, get those guys in there. Excellent. And here we go, another really hard recipe to put together. We're whisking, and we're gonna whisk. And we're just gonna whisk a bit. The sauce is looking a little thick to me, but I think it's going to be okay because this is going to uh, need two hours in the refrigerator uh, to get pen uh, to penetrate that meat and give it some good flavor. Oh my gosh. Oh, the smell is fantastic. The fish sauce, even though we put a lot in there, it's not dominant. Um, the... Um, Oh, there's a little fish sauce uh, running through the mid palate. And so if you are a little scared of fish sauce, you could always reduce that a little bit. I still think you need to at least put, let me see, what was that supposed to be in there for the fish sauce? That was a quarter cup. Um, put an eighth cup in there or just a couple of tablespoons. But that mixed with the ginger uh, and their spices. Oh, man. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So there we go. We've got this uh, absolutely fantastic marinade going. Uh, we have got our beautifully uh, thinly sliced uh, meat here. We're going to get this uh, in, a, uh, in a plastic bag. We're going to let it marinate for a couple of hours, get it on the grill, and we're going to have some fun. And in the meantime, I'm going to get dessert ready for us today because today we're also doing the uh, grilled peaches. So while this is marinating, I'm going to start prepping that. And then we'll come out and uh, we'll get this thing finished up for the day. All right. Thanks. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, friends. Freddie's back with me because the grill is hot and he smells some good food coming. Uh, we've got our uh, chimichurri chicken. We've got the... Um, Thai inspired steak, our grilled peaches, they're just out here because they look fantastic. They'll be going on a little while, but then we've got our rainbow flag um, uh, veggies here. So we're gonna go ahead and get these on the grill. I've got my grill before I opened it up and lost all the heat. It was running around 400, 425, and that's gonna be fine. And I'm pretty confident that I know it's gonna take, going to take my steak and chicken a little longer and my chicken are in bigger chunks than my steak so I'm going to get those guys on the hot spot let's get my chicken and steak going right now there we go and I know it's a little hotter towards the middle because so I did have the sear station going on because this is a fantastic Weber grill uh, that is unsolicited they're not paying me to say that 
I just happen to really love this grill. And then I had a little extra snack left over. <laughs> I'm going to throw some chimichurri churi sauce on there. And uh, that's what Freddie and I are going to be snacking on while the guests are uh, getting ready. All right, we're going to close the grill real quick here. I'm going to let these guys go for about four minutes before I put the veggies on. All right, my friends, let's give these guys a check. We've got a few minutes uh, going on. Um, let's take a look at the chicken. The chicken is doing fine. Doing fine. Need a few more minutes for that. Let's check out the beef. The beef is actually moving a little quicker because I, I think I cut it a little thinner. So we're going to go ahead and give the beef a little rotate. Do a little quarter turn. We're going to want to have it hit on each side. That's looking good. I'm going to turn that down a little bit to slow it uh, just a second. And then I'm going to get these uh, chickens moved over so I can get some of these fantastic veggie ones on. Excellent. All right, chickens, you get over here. Quit hogging up all the good spaces there. There we go. That's looking good. I think I can sneak this one back. Oh, there we go. And we'll get that there. Oh, one more pro tip real quick. Uh, since I am using the bamboo skewer, bamboo, since I'm using the bamboo skewers versus the uh, steel skewers, um, they will uh, catch on fire. Uh, so you got to soak them in water probably about a half an hour before you start uh, grilling. All right, let me get these down. I totally forgot. You really want to hit the veggies with a little more salt and pepper because that marinade, you know, they have those thick skins, doesn't quite penetrate as much. They're not as flavorful as the other ones. So I'm just going to hit them with a little salt and pepper. Got enough oil on there that'll stick. Uh, there we go. That's fantastic. When I flip them, I'll hit them one more time. And uh, we'll see you in five. Thanks. Okay, my friends, we have got everything ready for dinner right now. Uh, you have to wait a little bit longer for the peaches because I'm going to go down and... Uh, I'm going to go down. No, I'm not. I'm going <laughs> to sit down and eat a little dinner, and I'm going to see how things go. But before I sit down to dinner, I want to see which wines are going to pair best. So I was thinking about the Savignon Blanc with the super awesome chicken. I was thinking about the Albarino with the amazing, and I've already had a snack of the veggies, and then my uh, super awesome steak with the peanut sauce with my uh, Freddy Cuvée. I don't know which way to start. I don't know if I should start Albarino or Savion Blanc. Uh, I'm going Sab. Ah, uh, no, I'm doing Albarino. I'm checking out the veggies. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit of. Uh, oh man, there's a little green bell pepper and maybe a little bit of the uh, zucchini. Oh, smells fantastic. Hmm. 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 Dusting it with that little bit of salt and pepper right as it gets on the grill. Gives you a little extra flavor. Absolutely fantastic. Ooh, we had a little heat in there. I'm catching a little heat. Maybe that, oh, that, that might have been a jalapeno. All right, super exciting. Mm. Albarino with that beautiful, unbelievable pear. A little bit of green apple and some richness character. It's going great. Oh, and by the way, I just went ahead and made a little bit of uh, quinoa and brown rice to uh, serve this with. Oh. oh, I was right on that one. Okay, let's do a little bit of chicken and the chimichurri. Uh, this one's got the sauce. I'm just going to do the chicken on its own and see how that is. chimichurri i'm not kidding you i don't think i'm ever going to go with either a red or a white wine vinegar uh anymore i'm going to do them both the flavor is fantastic i hope it didn't ruin the chicken mm. freddy just a second i'll get you some more in a second oh that's very nice very nice the chimichurri as the sauce is very intense once you grill it, those flavors um, subdue and intensify. Um, no, no, they don't. They just, they, they, just, they just retract a little bit, but you have that beautiful flavor of the chicken that works good. Oh, the acidity of the Savignon Blanc. The acidity of the Savignon Blanc is absolutely fantastic, but now I need some chicken. 
uh, with some fresh chimichurri on top. Oh, okay, those are well, portioned nicely. I cut them perfectly. Very good. Oh, even better. Oh, you get the brightness of that super fantastic uh, sauce. Uh, the crispiness of the chicken going great. Let me see if there's a little bit of the rice that's going to go nicely. Mm. Oh, wow. Savignon Blanc is very good. I just want to see if the Albarino is kind of nice as well. Oh, this is a toss-up. The Albarino could absolutely go two different ways. I'm going to try a little more of that uh, chimichurri, just to make sure the Albarino uh, goes along with that as well. Oh, so good. So bright. Because very bright. Toss up on uh, both of these. Uh, they both go great. I know the Savion Blanc is going to go great with the veggies. Let me switch into the reds real quick so we can get this in. Because I need to sit down and eat. This is so good. All right, we got to do it a couple different ways. We just have to do the meat. Then we'll do it with the peanut sauce. All right, we grabbed a little bit of the meat. Come on. Oh. All right, we need to cut that off. There we go. And you can stay there. Freddie says, okay now, Papa. <laughs> Freddie. All right. Uh, this is important. I know. Uh, it's not my fault. It's actually Norma Ramazzotti's fault. He didn't used to be a dog uh, that begged, but Norma kept feeding him, and now he is. Come here, handsome. Oh, he has two paws up uh, for that. All right, on its own. Let me get a little red wine flavor in here. Hey, 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 it's mine. Wow. Soy sauce. The coriander is driving this. Um, that fish sauce, when I tasted it on its own, it had, it was there. I could feel it. Now it's definitely driven way to the back. Wow, absolutely fantastic. Who knew this would go with Thai food? Uh, so here is my classic Rome uh, blend, the Grenache Sarama Vedra. Absolutely delicious. Stop it, guys. I want some of this myself, too. And now I need to see how it is with the peanut sauce, because the peanut sauce, as you know, is a pretty intense sauce. I don't know if it's going to make it with the uh, with the Grenache. So raw. My Vedra. Oh. Here's one of those situations where two very intense flavors come together, make each one of them relax, uh, and bring out the best of both worlds. There is a lot of ginger in my peanut sauce, but it's really bringing together those uh, darker flavors. It stands up to the peanut sauce. I was a little worried uh, that that wasn't going to go. It absolutely does. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I need to go ahead and sit down and eat dinner before this stuff gets cold. I'm going to go ahead. I think the Savignon Blanc and the Albarino might actually go with the steak as well. Um, because it's, I don't know, I, I'm just, I'm just kind of feeling it. So uh, give me a few minutes. We're going to have dinner. I'm going to come back. I'm going to throw some peaches on the grill. Slap some... Uh, mascarpone cheese in there and uh have some dessert in a bit so all right we'll see you in five maybe 10 or 15 this is some good stuff thanks <laughs> oh my god um, so now we're going to get dessert prepped uh dinner party's coming up in a few minutes and uh but i don't want to be prepping the dessert while i'm hanging out with my friends so we're going to get this ready to go and this one okay those have all been easy this is the easiest all of all. Uh, this is going to actually produce, let me see, um, the recipe actually calls for six peaches halved, so it's going to be 12 portions in this one. Uh, we're just going to do a couple today uh, because the party's actually not until Friday. I'm going to save all of this uh, for later in the week, but it can't get any simpler than this. We have eight ounces of mascarpone um, 
uh, cheese, absolutely fantastic. Really, uh, gosh dang it, just at least delicious. That's the base for uh, cannolis and stuff like that. We're gonna do one tablespoon of maple syrup, one tablespoon of honey, preferably if you have very good friends that have their own hive. Oh, there's a bee trying to get some honey. Hey, this is mine, dude. Get back. Uh, preferably if you have some friends uh, give you honey from their uh, uh, hives, that'd be great. And then we're gonna do one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Holy cow. Let's see. Can I make this dessert? Here we go. Let's see. That looks like, oh, uh, that looked like one tablespoon. This is going to look like one teaspoon. Beautiful. Because we're going to taste it. And if we need some more of the other goodies in there, we're going to uh, add some more. And here is uh, my good friend's honey. That looked like one nice tablespoon. All right. Super simple. Get these guys out of the way. And we're just going to mix it up. Whisking around, whisking around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, put this in the refrigerator while we're having dinner. And then right before dinner, we're going to get these peaches out. We're going to cut them in half. We're going to baste them in some olive oil. And then we're going to put them right back on the grill that we cooked dinner in. Oh, man, that's looking fantastic. I wonder if it's tasting fantastic. Oh, so you're just gonna put a little dollop uh, where the seed was, um, and then we're gonna garnish it with some slivered almonds. At this point, uh, back in the olden days, I would then probably go ahead and uh, you know shake a little bit of uh, brown sugar on top. I'll see what the sweetness level is of the peaches. We are at the beginning of the peach season, so we'll see if these peaches are tasting well. Oh my gosh, all my friends are really trying to get their honey back. Uh, who told them that I had taken it all? There we go. Oh, look, some got my thumb. Oh, man. Oh, just such a rich, cheesy, but now syrupy maple flavor. It's going to go great with those grilled peaches. We're going to add a little toasty notes to them when we grill it. Don't you bite me. And um, all right, I'm going to get out of here before these guys try to attack. Okay, my friends, we are back. I haven't spilled again. My shirt is still relative relatively clean and oh my gosh uh everything was fantastic the chimichurri was great with the um quinoa and rice so was uh the peanut sauce i dipped my steak into the chimichurri and uh chimichurri is a classic on steak and on chicken it transferred perfectly i'm so glad i threw a little of that red wine in there because that was a nice uh, little diversion from uh the uh peanut sauce and honestly, the peanut sauce was too intense for me. But once it was paired up with the uh, Jimmy, uh, excuse me, with the uh, with the steak, it was absolutely fantastic. So now I need some dessert. We haven't done any desserts. This is my first dessert. So we've got our peaches. We're gonna go ahead and simply. This is a little bit of um, uh, traditional uh, recipes call for canola oil. I'm using avocado oil. Uh, it still has uh, not a lot of flavor, but it's gonna be nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give these guys a little bath inside, outside, all around the town. Most people would just tell you to simmer, the, uh, put the oil on the inside, but I like a hot bottom as well as a hot top. So I'm doing both sides. And also, you know, <laughs> come on, look how beautiful it looks. Uh, nice and shiny. Uh, who doesn't like a little shiny bottom to their peaches? Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Ready to go. Let's see. Oh, man, that's perfect. We have got, uh, we have achieved 400 on the grill. So what I'm going to do is uh, typically most people go about three to four minutes just on the flat. Uh, but I'm going to go a minute and a half, two on the bottom. And then I will uh, flip it over and hit the top. go nice hot grill so we're going bottom bottom first then we'll go bottoms up later oh we had a runaway she was she's a slippery devil <laughs> awesome okay guys a minute and a half i'll be right back we're gonna get these guys turned over thank you 
All right, my friends, we are back. We have uh, been uh, searing on the grill for just a couple more minutes now. I'm quite confident my juicy peaches are ready. Um, sometimes they might stick a little bit, even though you greased them. So, uh, oh man, give them a, oh, a little flip. Look at that, a nice little uh, browning on the top. Oh, got, didn't get two on the, oh. Oh, we almost, we almost hit a runaway. That was, uh, I might have enjoyed a little glass of wine or two while I was um, enjoying dinner. Um, so here's the deal. One of these has perfect stripes across the top. I'll make sure that my uh, most prized guest gets that one. Everything else will be fine. Oh my goodness, look at that. So we've got our uh, juicy tops uh, all grilled up there and we're gonna put a little bit of uh, my uh, cheese in there. Don't forget uh, that we did brown the bottoms before we got the tops done. That is it just a minute and a half, it makes it better. So I've got my beautiful mascarpone honey and uh, oh my gosh, all those other fun things we put in there, I can't remember, <laughs> good lord. Oh, a little bit of uh, brown sugar, we're gonna go ahead and put a little dollop in each one of the tops holes. Oh, that looks fantastic. What's nice is this has been in the refrigerator for the last, um, oh gosh, about an hour and a half. So it's nice and cool. So what's going to be nice when your guests uh, receive this is that it's going to be a little cool. And then as they get uh, through it, it's going to start uh, getting warmer because the peach is going to transfer that heat. All right, there we go. We uh, threw that on the top. We're going to go ahead and put a couple of uh, slivered almonds as a garnish who doesn't want a little crunch uh mixed in there and uh i've never done it before but i was feeling it just because these peaches were at the beginning of the season they might not have been at their peak of ripeness uh so we're gonna go ahead and give just a little just a little drizzle on the top of some of the maple oh fantastic the peaches are warming that cheese up so what you want to do you can't be messing around Everybody needs to be seated. Uh, these things need to get plated, and then to your guests before that cheese just starts running everywhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna dig in here, and then uh, sorry everybody, they're gonna be a little runny when you get them. But let me see what's uh, going on. Uh, two knives? That's probably too much. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna save the pretty one for my guests. I'm gonna take the little sad one over here. Gosh darn it. Actually, they might have worked out great. Not so right because I've still got some texture so I can lift it up. If I was wearing my mic, I would take it and drop it. Holy mackerel. I'm kind of torn between two lovers and feeling like a fool right now because I was thinking that my peaches weren't quite ripe enough. But they held together better. Typically, I use perfectly ripe peaches, and they uh, are a little mushy and falling apart. But since we grilled them, we got that sugar to uh, energize and loose everything up in there. Maybe it's because I uh, uh, got the bottom a little warm first. Holy... Okay, this is what kind of crazy time it is. I need another bite before I even try my wine. That is unbelievable. Ready. This one's not for you, my friend. Somebody needs to shut the front door. That is unbelievable. I need to do this as its own uh, video because if you need a, a dessert that's going to take you approximately three minutes in the grocery store in four and a half minutes of prep, and two minutes before you serve it to your uh, guests, and then you blow their socks off. Unbelievable. I absolutely wanted to salt uh, the tops and the bottoms before we uh, grilled them to add a little more, and it would be fantastic. Do I? Uh, this is just a kosher salt, not a C. But I. Do, do, do. And when you're doing salt as an accent, make sure it's an accent, not too much. Let me see what that tastes like. Uh, Danny, we were on the same page. You, I was thinking about that before I did it, but I was uh, also thinking that um, I would like to uh, finish my dinner and relax.
the reason why the salt works is that what happens is we caramelize things. And everybody's uh, familiar with this salted chocolate caramel that's going on right now. Every fancy uh, confectioner has it. And, oh, man. Unbelievable. And, you know, I've always done almonds. I'm thinking walnuts might be nice, actually, as well. Because walnuts can bring a little bitterness to the game. Especially if they're raw versus uh, cooked. Let me see if any of these uh, wines per up. I might not care. Because that is so good on its own. Oh, Savion Blanc, very nice. 